Hi, how you doing? Welcome to the first episode of my new podcast, Haverin, bringing you conversations in Scotland. In this first episode, I speak to Maria Rudd, an artist from Moscow, Russia, who now lives in Edinburgh. It was a good discussion where we talked about Maria's previous work and her upcoming show, Shamanic, a live art show at the Old College Quad in Edinburgh. If you enjoy the podcast, then please give us a like, subscribe to us on iTunes and on YouTube, and share it with your friends and family on Facebook. So, without any further delay, please enjoy episode one of Haverin with artist Maria Rudd. Thank you. Hello, thanks for coming on the podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, maybe you could start with the beginning. Um, the beginning of the world. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning of the world, the very beginning. Okay. Um, well, that we'll have to ask people who are a bit cleverer than me and more educated because I don't know if anybody can tell you about the beginning of the world. I would be very pleased. I'd like to hear. Sure, me too. No, I'm only kidding. Maybe you could just tell me about your when you first realized that you wanted to make art. I don't remember. I probably when I realized that I have to be on this planet, I mean, I don't remember. I started painting when I was two. Mm. But I do remember myself since I was two. And I was a painter since I was two. As far as I'm concerned. Uh, probably earlier, but I don't remember. Mm. And the show that we're going to talk about, which we'll come to. Shamanic. Shamanic, yeah. Um, it's, very, it's very much a collaboration between art and music. Is music something that's always been a part of your life? My mother was an exceptional musician. She was a virtuoso pianist and she was a wonderful composer. And yes, music was a massive part of my life since I remember myself. Mm. And the relationship between art and music, is there... I remember, I've, I've, I noticed you in another interview saying that when you listen to music, um, at first you, you, you seen images as well. <laughs> Yes, art and music are inseparable because color has sound and sound has color. And that's not, it's actually been even scientifically proven, but it's something which always existed together and it just became separated by concert halls, exhibition halls, and... Um, Otherwise, it's united because, uh, and architecture as well, because architecture has rhythm. So it's all part of the same thing. Mm. And so some people are more sensitive to that than others. I mean, personally, when I when I hear music, I can I can go somewhere in my mind and I can I can see some kind of images. But for you, am I right in thinking that it was very visceral? Well, I just see paintings and I see paintings which are alive and which come to me with music. And um, yeah, it's, it's a fantastic experience. And I just want to give this experience to other people. Is there, is there a shamanic process to, to your art, to where this art comes from? Well, shamanic is the name of a show and it's to do with transcendence. It's to do with art and music being sort of given to you to give. Mm. So, and it's, I think that's all there is to it. It's a name. Okay. It has nothing to do with rituals or beliefs or anything. It's a name. So you're not, you're not a shaman. Uh, uh, no, I don't think so, because I believe you have to be initiated. Mm, okay. And I haven't, unless I forgot. <laughs> you may have done. Okay, cool. So maybe this is this work, Shamanic, is part of, uh, as a continuation of the Animotion project. Is that correct? The Animotion show, yes. It's basically, the Animotion show is something which brings together music and painting in real time. And... Um, since I think 2014, 
uh, we started projecting it onto architecture, which brought an architecture into a mix and made it much more mag magical. We used to do it on just a screen. And um, yeah, it's an experience. Mm. It's an experience. It's more an experience than a show. It's something impossible to explain. And you really have to see it. You really have to come along. That's yeah, fine. you do. So where did the where did the idea for Animotion come from? Where did that begin? Well, it basically came from the very simple thing that music and art are separate, that I always seen images uh, when I listen to music, and that um, I find exhibitions, exhibition openings um, very difficult in terms of... Um, you know, they're kind of quite sterile. Mm. We don't have life because for me, the painting isn't a static thing. It's something which lives, moves. It's alive. The painting is alive. But it's very difficult to explain. The only way to explain it is to actually show that it's alive. Mm. And that's what an emotional show strives to do. Yeah, and most importantly, the music and art um, to show how they directly relate it, you know. And it's a collaboration with musicians because, you know, it's not it's not something, and it's not just a process where you paint a painting to music. That's not how it works. The painting is born because of music. And it's not one painting, but a sequence of images. So it's like a live storyboard, which comes to life in front of the audience. And the music is alive and painting is alive. And the, you know, it's like the marriage of the two in real time. Mm. And um, the uh, the devising, the creating process, was that something that's something that you obviously worked hand in hand with Evelyn with? Um, did you, was the music composed for the piece or was... Well, uh, <clears throat> with Evelyn, mainly we work with uh, music which is already written. Mm. And there are some s sections which we always did improvisations, but the music predominantly in the program is already written. So with Shamanic, for example, the music is totally new and it's created by people who play it so that's the difference mm. between for example classical music where normally if you're a classical composer it, it used to be completely different in the past say you know a few centuries ago especially uh, but it's now quite rare for a composer to perform his or her own music and of course if it's written for an orchestra it's well, it's impossible. So, um, but in all other genres of music, well, in s many other genres of music, shall I say, the music is created by people who also perform it. I mean, yes, you, you, you know, you do have uh, other people covering songs and, you know, sampling songs and things like that, but that's, you know, a different area. Mm. So this time around with Shamanic, you're working with people who are, you're, you're composing the songs together or you're taking more of an active role in the, no, in the composition? No, they're creating music and I'm creating painting. Mm -hmm. So we're creating it together. And most of the, even songs which, we have a couple of songs which are part of the, you know, new albums which are just coming out. Um, but they're still being arranged differently for shamanic. Okay, and it sounds like you're working with some excellent, excellent people. Who's who have you got lined up for shamanic? Uh, shamanic is a, like an audiovisual band, and so it's the project originates from it's me and Faye Five, who's the front woman of Resilus, and Faye and I basically decided to do shamanic, and decided to call it shamanic. And that's what kind of, then we, it's also connected with the exhibition at the National Museum of Scotland called Reap It Up, which is 
the story of Scottish pop. And so it's, it sort of coincides with, it's one of the official events uh, associated with that exhibition. And uh, quite a few people, well, um, so there's Faye from Resilus, and there's also Chris Agnew from Resilus. And Resilus are very, uh, so they, of course, represented at the Rip It Up. And then there is Mike Bailey from the Skids. And then, um, so it's all the, and then you have Martin Metcalf, who's, uh, you probably know Martin. Uh, he used to be in a band, Goodbye Mr. McKenzie. And now it's a fantastic band called The Filthy Tongues. And they just released their second album, uh, which I think everybody should buy. <laughs> no, I think they should actually. Sure. It's amazing. So, um, and um, it's called Back to Hell. And um, and then you have DJ Dolphin Boy, who um, is a brilliant um, down tempo DJ. Mm and who worked with me on the Animotion show. And uh, and then the most interesting thing you have is um, Kit Congo Powers, who is ex Cramps and the Bad Seeds. So he's flying from LA now to join us. Wow. And then, of course, <clears throat> I lost my voice. And then, of course, um, you have... Um, a most amazing and wonderful Rula Lenska, uh, who is a kind of household name in, you know, I mean, I don't watch TV, uh, but at the moment Rula is on Coronation Street. Ah, okay. Um, so have you guys worked together? This will be the first time you've worked together in this? Well, Dolphin Boy and I have worked together before and we, we worked together as far as, you know, we were in China together and Austria together and Switzerland together, blah, 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 blah. And we worked together on many shows. The Faye and I did an experimental show together um, and also we did a show which also was um, one of the shows we did with Evelyn Glenny in St. John's Cathedral in Edinburgh. Um, and everyone else, obviously, uh, Faye is um, the Resilus and Chris Agnew is also the Resilus, so they are from the same band. Sure. And then a lot of you know, so people, uh, these are people know each other for a very long time. Um, and we, some people never work together and that's the first time, but they all came together because we love the project. And you've been rehearsing together? Yes, and we're rehearsing together and we're creating a show together and you should come and see it. I'm definitely going to come and see it and everybody else should as well. Um, okay, so how, how's, the, how's the experience been so the, the show itself, the Animotion show, it seems like it's evolved um, quite a bit since the beginning. Originally was in the in the space in the museum and now you're you're actually projecting onto the side of uh, side of buildings, which is Well it just uh, basically it's modern technology allows you to do that. Mm -hmm. And it's a wonderful thing because it's a totally different experience. Uh, you know, it works as an indoor show, but the outdoor show is totally magical because you have the beautiful buildings which suddenly come to life in such different way. It's it's actually mesmerizing. You know, and not even you know even um, I mean, uh, it uses the show obviously uses the language of Lumiere and. Uh, you know, it's not a new thing, you know, people have been projecting on two buildings now for, well, well over a decade. Um, and it is quite a magical thing. And I think because architecture has rhythm and it has connection with sound, just like painting does, um, that works especially well. And because it's live, because it's analog, because it's not, a computer generated image and the building is alive you know it's stone 
It's one of the oldest things in the world. And it's built by people. You know, we try to project onto interesting, significant architecture and onto something which people would suddenly think, oh, it looks, you know, the building looks so different. It's suddenly unrecognizable. And then they suddenly see it in a new light and they also have a connection with the place. Wow. So, yeah, so there's actually three three mediums, or probably more, but you've got the, the art, you've got the music and you've got the architecture. Yes. It's incredible, yeah. And the, the space is going to be the old quad. Yes, it's the old college quad and it's quite easy to find if you know where it is. It's on South Bridge and it just, um, it's a, it's belongs to Edinburgh University, it's, it, which is also great because it's a place of learning and uh, it's a fantastic setting in every respect. And, uh, well, there is an address on our website, just in case people, um, but it's, um, it's... Just behind the museum, isn't it? It's just behind the museum. Yeah. It's not far from Festival Feature. Mm. Yeah, I know where it is. Yeah, it's before Festival Feature. Yeah, and we'll put lots of links up below the video so people can can find it if they're if they're interested in it. Um, so you did but it, but they should buy tickets in advance. Yeah, that's very advisable mm. to buy tickets in advance, and you can buy it online or you can buy it by calling Queen's Hall. So, um, how long did it take you and and the group to create the show? To create a show it takes a long time. It takes several months mm. because, you know, well, I mean, probably if, if, if you have a chance to have a studio every day, if you have a chance to, you know, have everything every day and if everybody's available every day, if nobody's on tour, if nobody's away, you know, but it with all the things, it's, it always takes time. I mean, I have to say it was surprisingly fast, but it does take, um, you know, you you want to do something which you are happy with to give to people. You don't want to do something which you... So you do a lot of things again and again and again and again. Mm. You know? Sure. And even if you've done it very fast, then you have to do it again and again because you think, no, it's not good enough. Yeah. I mean, it's... And each time you do it, it's completely different as well. Yes, and you always want to do it better. Yeah. You always want to do it better. Yeah. And I think that's that's one of the beautiful things, just from some of the videos that I've seen online, because there's some videos out there on YouTube just now of some of your previous shows. Um, the kind of, um, I was going to say impermanence of it, but I guess when it's recorded, it becomes it becomes something that's always there. But this, how many different paintings do you do in a show? Because you, 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 paint, you paint these beautiful... A lot. A lot, yeah. <laughs> well, in every, uh, in every song or in every uh, piece of music, obviously depending on the length, you know, if it's a long piece, there are more changes. If it's a shorter piece, there are less changes. But I think it's minimal, minimum, you know, three or four changes in every piece, like radical changes. And um, it's... Yeah, it's a transformation. But that's the whole point. Like, you know, I paint in oil, which is considered to be permanent medium. I mean, nothing is permanent, but, you know, it is a very long-lasting medium. And I work with materials which are natural, and I'm a snob when it comes to paint. I'm a snob when it comes to paper. I'm a snob when it comes to all materials. I'll never paint with materials I don't trust. You know, I used to always prime my own canvases. I mean, I do have, you know, somewhere where they're primed that I can trust because you need a lot of space if you want to prime huge canvases yourself. But all I'm trying to say is that it, I love natural materials and I trust them because, you know, there's nothing better. But I... in. I want to be, not because I want my work to last, for me, I don't care. Um, I want people who have my work and who 
who if it means something to them and it will mean something to you know other people who are not even born yet i want them to be able to have it as long as we can without needing to be restored i don't want to give people hustle you know of doing something which you know disintegrated you know you love something and it just you know fell apart you know you have responsibility mm. as a as an artist as a craftsman you have responsibility like if you are you know making a pair of shoes you want to make a pair of shoes i mean unless you just want to make quick money but you for the sake of shoes you want to make a pair of shoes which will last and last and last mm. and which people you know if they love this pair of shoes that it stays with them you know so it's, it's nothing different to you know it's craft and um with an emotion it's the opposite it's something which is impermanent but that also answers my other point that art should never be possessed by anyone it belongs to everyone nobody can have what i painted you know um during the show because it's gone so it's like the other kind of my other side where i'm saying that should be for everyone it should be for people who are there and it doesn't matter if we you know because you know it's not a commodity mm. and it's not an investment so it's, it's gone an experience yeah it's an experience yes but it brings you closer to um it, it also brings you closer to art it's an educational process as well you know because you know it's interesting um yeah it's it's interesting from many points of view i think mm. and it's interesting you mentioned education there as well because you were showing me some uh, some incredible pictures earlier on that were drawn by by young people you've got fans from the age of two or three all the way up five to, from five five no i don't have fans which are three <laughs> okay. my youngest fans are five five wow well it's still quite young uh, mm. well basically i think art is a language which art and music you know it's a language which has no age and has no i mean you know it, it may have a trend which comes and goes but if it's real you know if a song is great people are going to sing it now and forever you know if a piece of music is great you may forget it like you know even bach was forgotten for 300 years i mean and he's probably well the top composer of all you can't get any better at the moment yeah no i would definitely say that that's something in my opinion that applies to your work and i mean it's a it's an overused word but it definitely feels very timeless oh very, thank you yeah. i really appreciate it i don't have any relationship with my work i just paint what i see i was very well educated by people who had a lot of skills and patience and I just do my best but I don't believe anything belongs to me or has it's not my achievement and it has nothing to do with me mm. because you know I'm seeing images and I am I've been given skills and so I'm just trying to be better and I hope you know I hope to be better mm. but that's basically it and I think I've never changed my opinion on that. I wanted to be better than that since I remember myself and I haven't got there. I think maybe you become better. You have to, you know, like maybe you never, you never reach that when you're happy with what you've done. Yeah. No, I think it's a really beautiful idea as well. This, you were, you mentioned before about when you were younger and you, you, you seen, you, you realized that, that, um, that music has color and color has music and that that was something from your childhood and that in the show shamanic and animation you're you're almost giving us something back from your childhood yes but i don't think anyone should stop being a child okay. because once they do they stop being you stop you just stop being alive i think you know if everybody could just remember themselves when we were five six seven i think the world will be much better place because we had more compassion and we had more 
simplicity and yet more wisdom. I'm serious. I think once you stop being a child, it's quite dramatic and boring. <laughs> <laughs> and the paintings that you use in Animotion and Shamanic, are they, they are completely new? For, for the for the performance i mean obviously they're they're no, similar they just come as yeah as sequences of images yeah some of them are very interesting as in bizarre mm. and some of them yeah oh so they come to you in during the process so, so they can be different at different they times they come to you when you hear the music i can't paint to like i can't i don't see all music there's some music i really love but I don't see very much mm. or don't see anything. And then some music I see absolutely, like incredibly, so clearly. Which is which? Which do you see music with? Well, you have to play me music. And then you say, <laughs> well, I see that. I don't see that. Oh, okay. So it's not, it's not a specific genre. It's just... No, it could nothing be to do. I don't believe music has to be divided by genres. I think this is revolting. Mm. Music is music. Like art is art. I mean, like, I don't think art or music should be divided by genres. I know it's convenient, but I think it also creates um, total isolation because people who, um, for example, like, we don't like dubstep or we don't like hip hop and they go like, oh, I hate that. But they never actually heard anything. Mm. Or like they go, oh, I hate blues. And you say, well, okay. And, when you start asking, we don't actually know, you know? Mm. It's like one guy said to me, I hate Shakespeare. I said, okay. Um, and which piece do you hate most? And he said, I never read it. And I said, so why, why do you hate him? And he said, oh, it's very old fashioned. I said, so you decided to hate something without ever reading it. But that's how people are sometimes, you know. So the genres dividing anything by a genre makes it, you know, immediately it labels it. And in if somebody, for example, doesn't like jazz, they wouldn't like any jazz on the basis this is jazz. But jazz is such a broad thing. It's not just one. You know, so they just, it divides people, not only music. Mm. And if music is good, it's good. It doesn't mean, I mean, it doesn't really matter when, who wrote it and what kind of music it is. It doesn't really matter. It's like a painting is good or a sculpture is good. I don't care if it was made 30,000 years ago or three minutes ago. It doesn't make any difference. I don't care who made it. It doesn't matter. It, it's not important who made it. And it's not important when it was made. All that is important, if it's good or not. <laughs> sure. You know. So, you know, it's like... Mm. So that you you apply the same ethos to the to the music in your show. It's 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 many different genres. No, no, no. It doesn't work like that. Look, the thing is, music is music, and um, yes, you can create a show with a lot of different genres, and you have you are in danger going to porridge, and like, but you can't bring a lot of different genres together. In fact, we used to do things where we brought together very different um, genres of music and it worked. Mm. Yeah, it, it, it actually did work. But um, no, it's a show, it's like a, it's like a, well, a band if you like, and it's a show where people from s slightly different genres and incredible musical ideas, incredibly creative, absolutely fantastic in every respect um came together and created something new that's how it is it's like different creative people came together and created something new mm. but it isn't the music doesn't represent necessarily the genre 
of the band in for which we are known. Sure. So, but again, you know, it's like impossible to describe. You know, you have to come and hear it. I can't. You know, I can only put your recording, um, and say, oh, that's how it is. You can't describe music or like art. Of course, yeah. No, I think I, I understand that. No, I'm, I'm really looking forward to coming along to hear it. Um, it's on the 28th of September. It's on the 28th of September in the old college court. Brilliant. Edinburgh. Yeah. And uh, you can get tickets at Queen's Hall, which is very confusing, but one should never be confused by things like that. Okay. So the tickets are at Queen's Hall, but the show is in Old College Quad, and that's a big difference. Okay, cool. And uh, where can people find more about you? What's your URL, your, your website? Well, first of all, we have to go to Shamanic, of which course. is www.shamaniclive.com. Cool, and we'll put the link for that below. And, I mean, Shamanic isn't dead, it's live. And... My site is just very simple. It's www.mariaradart.com. Very boring. Okay. Well, your art is anything but boring. Thank you. And I'm, uh, no, I'm very glad that I very luckily stumbled across your work and that we got this opportunity to speak. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the, the night on the 28th. Yes. And so should everyone okay no it's actually fantastic you know it's it's so and the music is incredible and we're also starting the show with Revin by Edgar Allan Poe oh wow yes read by Rula Lenska ah right yeah the actor fantastic yeah. excellent well thank you so much for your and time and it's going to be painted Edgar Allan Poe Oh, wow. You're going no, to be not painting. Edgar Allan Poe. But <laughs> <laughs> and it's not only the, it's, it's very difficult to explain, but it's, yes, it's the reading with music, with painting, uh, but it isn't theatre. It's something else. Mm. It's something entirely different. Yeah, no, it seems very it's an unique. Experience. Yes, it's an experience. Excellent. Cool. Thank you so much. Okay. Hey, how you doing? Liam again. If you enjoyed this episode of Haven, then please hit that subscribe button. Follow us on our different social media channels at Haven Media and share this podcast with your friends and family. And please look out for the next episode. Thanks.